Spring Boot has just added ChatGPT features. Let's take a look at how to use them in your apps. Instead of writing the code from scratch, we're going to clone an existing project from GitHub. Here we are at github.com forward slash rd-1-2022 forward slash AI open hello world. But don't let the name fool you. This app can do a lot more than simply print hello world. To clone this project, click code, and then copy the link for the URL. Now let's open my favorite IDE, IntelliJ. And on the welcome screen, select Get from VCS, or Version Control System. Paste in the URL you copied from the GitHub site, and click the Clone button at the bottom of the dialog. IntelliJ will download the project. There's a dialog box. It asks if you want to trust the project. Go ahead and click Trust Project. This code's very simple and can be trusted, plus it's from the group that maintains the Spring Boot framework. As a bonus, if you stick around until the end of this video, I'll show you where you can keep up with the ongoing development of Spring AI. While the project loads, please consider clicking the subscribe and like button to keep the channel growing. Thank you. During the IntelliJ startup process, if you see a prompt that says Load Maven Project, go ahead and click Load Maven Project. Let's go ahead and open up the README file so we can see the instructions for building and using this project. There's a lot of information here. The most important thing here is that we'll need to get a token from OpenAI to make this project work. We'll look at setting up our environment later in the video. Now let's look at the POM file. Here at the top of the file, things are pretty standard, like you'd see in any POM file for a Spring Boot project. The project uses version 3.1.2 of Spring Boot, web starters used, along with the Spring Boot actuator artifact. However, as we scroll down, a few things are different. First, we see an artifact called Spring AI, Open AI, Spring Boot Starter is being used. It's a snapshot version, and the group ID has the name Experimental. In the Spring Boot world, experimental features are not ready for production use, but there are certainly things you should be aware of that are coming. And at the bottom, it's using milestone builds for both the repo and the plugins. Spring Boot milestone builds are pre release builds. They're intended to provide early access to new features and bug fixes, but they're not recommended for production use. Now let's take a look at the code. The file called application is our entry point into the project. There's nothing unusual here, a main method that calls the run method of the Spring Boot application class. The class is annotated with at Spring Boot application, all very ordinary so far. And the simple package is where the code is that we actually want to see. There's a POJO or plain old Java object called completion that manages a field level variable of type string with a one argument constructor and a getter. Nothing magic here. The other class is a controller annotated with at rest controller called simple AI controller. This class is specifically designed to interface with an AI client. It contains a field level variable called AI client of type AI client. This is an interface that comes from the package org.springframework.ai.client and it's new to Spring Boot. The constructor uses dependency injection to automatically inject an AI client instance into the class at runtime. Finally, we have a method called completion that services the get method of the endpoint AI simple. It takes a string called message. The default value is tell a joke. So if no value is supplied, the content tell a joke becomes the message that's passed to the generate method of the AI client object. So this is where the magic happens. The method makes the call to ChatGPT and will be our opportunity to send requests, prompts, and other input to ChatGPT. The output from this method is wrapped in an instance of the completion class that we saw just a moment ago. All right, enough talk. Let's build some code. Open up the Maven window and select AI, open AI, hello world, then lifecycle, then package, and click the green arrow that will run the Maven build. IntelliJ builds our project code and creates a runnable jar for us. To see the jar, open up project, and then target, and there's the jar that was built. 
I'll close some of these windows and let's go back and look at the README file again. On the page is the URL for the location to generate the API keys. Copy that from the page and open up a browser and in a new tab, paste that into the browser. I already have an account and I'm logged in. If you don't have an account for open AI access, you'll need to set one up. Click on the create new secret key button. There's no need to give the key a name, so we'll just click on the green button, create secret key, and then click the copy button. We'll need to go set an environment variable on the system. I'm running on a Windows 11 machine. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine, you'll need to set the environment variable using something like this. Export variable name equals the secret key that we just copied. For Windows, search for environment, select edit the system environment variables, then environment variables. For the variable name, enter the string spring underscore AI underscore open AI underscore API underscore key. And for the value, paste in the value of the key we just generated. The variable name is something Spring sets up for us, and we don't have a choice in that matter. Then go ahead and click OK, and OK once again, and cancel out of the System Properties window if it's still open. IntelliJ won't pick up the change to the environment that was just made, so it will need to be restarted. Select File, then Exit, and Confirm Exit. Once it closes, restart IntelliJ. When it starts up, it will read the new environment variable that we just created for the open API key. Once IntelliJ starts up, the code was already built successfully, so we simply need to run it. To do that, open the terminal window. In the terminal, cd into the target directory where the jar file that was built exists. And from there, run java-jar AI, open AI, hello world, 001, snapshot.jar. It'll take just a moment for the jar to start up. Notice when it does, the application is listening on port 8080, just like any good Spring Boot application should. Remember the code is a controller listening for input. To pass it input, we could use several tools like Postman, Insomnia, Curl, and at least a dozen others. We'll use Curl to send a message to our server. Let's open a command window. Recall the code uses a default message of tell me a joke if nothing is specified. Let's rely on that behavior at first and simply run the command curl space http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash ai slash simple and press return, which will by default send a get request to the rest endpoint. This will send the message, tell me a joke, to ChatGPT. There's the response that I got from ChatGPT, shown as an anonymous JSON object. The first response is, sure, here's a classic one for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? And the punchline is, because they make everything up. Okay, no one ever said ChatGPT was a great comedian. Notice the embedded new line in the response, so we can get back multi-line output. Let's send our own message to ChatGPT. Let's enter curl dash dash get space dash dash data dash URL encode and then in quotes message equals tell me a joke about a cow in quotes and then the URL http colon slash slash localhost 8080 AI simple and our joke comes back along with the punchline which is now a cow pun. Let's recall the command again by pressing the up arrow key, and we'll send the same message again. We get another pun about cows. There should be no worry among comedians that ChatGPT will take their job. In fact, you know what? Enough with the jokes. Let's recall the command again and overwrite the request we sent to ChatGPT. Let's ask, what's the largest planet in our solar system? And we get back the message that says Jupiter is. By the way, I confirmed this with both Alexa and Siri, so I'm feeling confident that it's correct. Okay, here's the bonus I promised earlier. Go to docs.spring.io spring-ai reference index.html 
for information on the new Spring AI project. It describes the work being done to create a library of code for generative AI work in Java. There are several pages in the document covering AI concepts. There's even a discussion of other work being done for working with Azure OpenAI, as well as other projects. As you can see, a lot of the documentation is incomplete and coming soon. So check back often to see the rapid changes that will be coming to Spring Boot. Please share this video with others so they can learn about the new AI features in Spring Boot. Thanks for watching and remember to always begin secure.